Okay, now can you hear anything? Nope, no audio. Are you saying you can hear me now? Audio input capture. Oh, hey. Okay. You can hear me now. Cool. Uh, I don't know why. I have two, um, two cams, and I swapped them out, and maybe that just woke it up enough. Okay. So you have sound, and you can hear music, and one is not blasting the other one out hopefully um okay what did you miss what was i speaking into the void uh i think i was saying basically i'm here on a saturday uh because tomorrow's heather's birthday and even though she's saint heather and doesn't care about her birthday and doesn't want to celebrate her birthday i figure i should probably be available for her anyway so coming in one day early today not technically since I don't even really make myself do weekends but um, hey uh, here we are and this is awesome uh, back in the studio which is freezing cold uh, and then I made a joke about how but if you're in Australia uh, my garage is actually blazing hot so see how that works it's a little, it's a little joke um, and and I'm, I'm uh, cleaning up all these molds that we were working on last month. Uh, I got this whole collection here to start playing with. Some of them are in better shape than others. And I'm just going to be exploring uh, what to do about things like seams and uh, uh, place gaps that need to be filled, that sort of thing. Hi, Dottie. All right, so let's get some crazy close-up stuff going on here. First of all, is my autofocus not working now? Let's see. Oh, let's try that again. Okay. So, right here. Ah, okay. Here's a great here's a great place to see all the little micro bubbles that have formed because I um, pressure cast it, which keeps bubbles from forming inside, but it also pushes the resin so hard that it finds any little imperfections in the mold and makes little pimples which are usually very simple to simply scrape off like so
here's a, a bigger bump you can see because there was a, a significantly sized bubble not on the surface of the mold but inside but the pressure still pushed the uh, the resin to make that bump because of the void from the bubble in the mold now since I cast these in semi translucent material um, the I, I don't want to go in and fill things with another material because that will don't cut my thumb okay try not to this time don't want to die live on camera what was I saying oh yeah I don't want to fill in so there's there's this obvious bubble gap here and I'm just gonna leave that um, I mean for one thing it's not a big deal since this thing is only supposed to be viewed from kind of a top-down three-quarters view like this and so you can't can't see that bubble down there at all Cleaning these little seams is a bit trickier. See, they're really subtle. Gosh, I love that we can see that much detail on my camera. Um, scraping is probably the best bet. See, sandpaper, if I, if I sand it, then I have to go through this process of going down the well up I guess technically the the grit number progressively and just becomes a real pain it takes way longer than if you can just kind of scrape them off but scraping works best on really uh, convex surfaces not so much on concave ones since I have this flat blade I guess if I had a loop tool scraper I'd be able to get into the more um, well like in this example this area here uh, kind of the surface kind of curves in a way that makes it so if I'm scraping the edge off I'm also accidentally getting other parts well not this this part I'm doing all right uh, this part seems to be more problematic, but so one of the things with experimenting with a new a new sculpture that I'm making multiple copies of is I'm trying to figure out things like um, when when I do the cleanup work and then do the paint over it, uh, do any problems develop that I can that will then inform the next piece that I do. So this guy is going, this this whole base here is going to be painted kind of black or dark blue and then it's going to fade up into the, into the clear of his body, which will only have a very subtle paint job around the, the eyes and mouth. Maybe some in the shadows, we'll see. And so one of the experiments I have to do is see, can I do that um, with just uh, spray paint? for that base or do I need to break out the airbrush um, can I do the details with a wash of paint or again do I need to get out the airbrush I'm guessing I'm probably gonna have to airbrush more than I would like but we'll see in general the airbrush is just such a hassle I like to avoid it when I can Uh, let's see, our Bulgarian, uh, was your name Ivan? I'm actually terrible at names. I'm really good at recognizing faces, but man, names are super hard. Uh, 
actually, it's just now occurring to me, this is like, this is my nicest piece. I don't want to be doing my first experiments on this guy. So I'm gonna put him away, come back to my second best piece. Yeah, I'm gonna go to my third best piece. No, this, oh, this is, this is great. This is, this is a terrible one because I did not pressure cast it. So it's got all these little bubbles all throughout it, which, you know, when something's transparent, doesn't work so well. Oh, I got your name right, Ivan? Wow. So this guy is, here, let me get the original real quick. So I've got these two pieces that I'm casting in uh, translucent resin, just because I think they'll be cooler for the project that I'm doing. So this one is a guinea from the original Legend of Zelda video game on the Nintendo Entertainment System. And then this is an Octorok. Uh, so they've been in almost all Zelda games, but I'm doing the art from the very original one, because that's the one I, I played as a kid. In, you know, that's my magical nostalgia memories of it. Um, this this whole art project is just about reinterpreting how I saw the the world and the and the characters as a kid. This one I'm probably going to end up mostly painting over. I might try an experiment where I where I do like bluish paint just on the bottom and that'll cover most of the bubbles and then leave the top mostly translucent. Just just curious what that'll look like. Although he's got some paint and stuff up here. I don't know where that came from. Probably the mold when I probably when I molded this guy, when I pulled the rubber off, some little bits of paint ended up in the mold. And then I think this was the first cast that I did, and so it ended up embedded in there. Morph music mixes Scott. Uh, need help. What's good putty to use for casting small items? Uh, let's see, it depends on what you mean by casting small, so are they, are they like figures or are they something kind of, kind of like flattish like this? Because that will make a difference. Nessier, hey Nessier, says, lately got interested in molding but it's quite expensive to experiment with. Yes, it is. Hopefully my upcoming tutorial that uh, I'm doing these for will help save people time and money. Because a lot of the expense comes into just kind of doing it wrong over and over until you figure stuff out. <laughs> yeah. Which, I mean, I, I'm not immune from that. I still end up doing things wrong a lot. In fact, I've been reshooting. I've done a mold for uh, some of these guys several times because I want to demonstrate the kind of the best way to do it right and um, the, the first couple the first time I did most of these I kind of I screwed up one thing or another where it's just like not quite up to the point where I think I'm adding value to people's lives by them mimicking me so Morph says doing hands, faces, uh, split mounds, but with splitting. Uh, let's see, I assume what you mean by that is like a two-part mold that, that goes together and then you pop it apart. 
think that's what you would mean by split uh, mounds, but I'm not sure. Use brush latex at the moment. Okay. So if you're pouring a liquid into a mold, like I did with these guys, uh, that, that would be a resin, not a putty. Um, you could really only use a putty on a one part mold where you like press it in with your thumb or whatever. Um, for that kind of stuff, I really like this uh, epoxy sculpt. Um, it's one of my favorite mediums. Uh, for for pouring resin, I just use uh, I mostly use smooth on resin um, in the 300 series, but um, I've heard from people that that do casting professionally that smooth on has been having problems with their product line over the past couple of years that they're refusing to acknowledge and fix. Um, and I'm not sophisticated enough with the product to really, to really tell one way or another. Okay, now I'm using a sandpaper. This is a 220 grit. So it's pretty fine. Just want to see what happens when I go over these seams. Yeah, Sarah's asking, why am I using the knife? Use sandpaper, it's safer. Didn't you learn a lesson from last time? You know, it's hard for me to learn lessons. Uh, I was saying earlier, sandpaper is just a pain because once you sand it down, then you have to gradually go back up to, you know, higher and higher levels of sandpaper. Whereas if you can if you can carve it down with a knife smooth enough, then it's usually a faster process. Although this seems, I think this is getting the job done, and it's fine enough where it probably only needs one or two other passes with a with a finer sandpaper. Morph says, I've done a whole head the size of a tennis ball with milliput. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of milliput. see this this line here is kind of causing me trouble because the mold uh, when it when it went back together one of the edges was down just you know a micro millimeter enough to make it so that the, they don't they didn't line up perfectly smooth so I could either go to a, a heavier grit sandpaper to deal with this but as you can see I can scrape it down with my knife. Uh, I saved myself a lot of a lot of time. Ivan says I tried molding once. When the thing was finished, it looked like it came out of a nightmare. The thing was a face, by the way. Yeah, molding. Uh, takes time and practice and money. Therefore, it's not 
not a option for a lot of people who are strapped for uh, time or money. Morph says, got a pin. What was that putty you held up? I'll write it down, thanks. Morph says, it's the expense. Sorry for dropping in late. Just got back to Scotland and having time. Just got back to Scotland. Back to Scotland or from Scotland? Uh, let's see, that product you wanted to see was Aves Epoxy Sculpt. This stuff is awesome. I do a ton of work with it now. Uh, in fact, I'm going to be working with it in a couple minutes to start filling in some stuff, and you'll get a, a sense for how it works. I mean, it, it's very much like Milliput. It's just, um, uh, well, a thousand times cheaper because you can get this times two for like 25 bucks or 30 bucks, something like that. And imagine how many little Milliput strips it would take to uh, match that. Find a finer grain. Um, I don't think this is literally a three million three hundred sixty thousand. No, thirty three million six hundred four thousand and six grit paper. Um, but I think it's still finer than what I had. Uh, the figure I'm doing is a ghost called a Gini. It's from the original Legend of Zelda game on the Nintendo Entertainment Center system. It was the first game that really fired my imagination as a kid about virtual worlds and ex exploration and just it was a magical time for me. So it's one of those. Um, it's kind of like, you know how Peter Jackson did that awful King Kong movie? Because as a kid, King Kong just really fired his imagination. This is a similar thing. I just wanted to do... I'm remaking The Legend of Zelda with, um, with my own art as a tribute to it. See, so, okay, this must be a little bubble up here. That's what's going on. Filling in tiny little bubbles like that is a huge pain, especially if you're talking about translucent stuff, which this is. Really, the only option is to sand down past where the bubble is. Which, uh. But you know what? This is the experimental piece. So I'm going to go ahead and try that real quick. Got a little, this cute little baby electric. Sander McDeely. Ness here, you thought it was Fatso from Casper the Friendly Ghost. Not familiar with that one. I know Casper, I don't know his friends.
This is making me wonder if there are. Let's see. Oh, ah, okay. So this is a 180 paper. What else do they have? 240. 400. Okay, so 180 is the most, is the grittiest of the grits. Although I think it's been worn down with other stuff. So I'm going to get a fresh sheet, see if that takes it down faster. Dremel is your best friend. Yeah, so Dremel, I don't like Dremel for sanding because it spins and it usually, it's really hard for me to control. I don't know if I'm just bad at it, but I can't really get fine detailed results with sanding. Whereas this thing, rather than spinning, it just vibrates back and forth super fast. So it does the equivalent of this just like a hundred times faster. the next level up of fineness. You wish you can see some of my work while I work. Well, you know, you could always just go to my website in another browser and just have that open to the side. Just, you know, scroll through that. My website's Breath of Life Art at or breathoflifeart.com. Uh, let's see, 240. iPad. Oh, yeah, you can't have multiple things open on an iPad. How many years have I been doing this professionally? Um, so, I don't do very much professional actual sculpture work. Um, most of what I do on this channel is just my side projects. Um, sometimes I'll get a gig here and there, but um, my day job is making video games. So. This is just a passion project for me. Okay, so I still have bubbles down here. Mm. All right, I'm gonna give this one more try using this technique. I may have just mostly missed where I was aiming for because once the dust gets on there, it's hard to see.
Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think I just need a significantly uh, grittier sandpaper to get down there. Ivan's asking, what's the hardest project I've ever worked on? Uh, hmm. So I'm going to use a 100 grit here. Hardest. Maybe, maybe, it, certainly the longest. I'm probably, I think the length of project lasts um, probably ties into how difficult it is also. Although, there, you know, if the process you're doing is really hard or you're learning new stuff, that also adds to the difficulty. But a project that had all of those going on was my Colossus project. So I think I'd probably say that's, that's the hardest one. Morph says, sorry, uh, but did you use that putty to make that, uh, to make this guy? So this was super sculpy firm mostly. See how it like has this whole soft swooshing tail coming down off of it. I added that with the with the epoxy sculpt. Um, and so I, I mix and match a lot. Um, the You know, the great stuff about epoxy, obviously, is that you don't have to bake it. And so once you've got a piece in a state where you don't want to keep putting it back in the oven and, and such, uh, the epoxy sculpt is great for that. And it's also just a lot, lot, lot stronger than Sculpey. So for doing thin, narrow parts or, um, you know, well, just anything that you don't want to break, man, do it in epoxy sculpt. It's pretty, mu pretty much invincible. I mean, Milliput's the same way, right? So you're used to that property. Okay, I think I finally blasted those bubbles away. So now I try to do kind of a soft pass with that say, with the same very gritty paper so that when I go to the next layer, it's not gonna take so much effort. Let's see, what is this one again? 240, I'm gonna try with the electric again. Putty filling. I just started using wire armatures. Uh, yeah, I find actually with epoxy sculpt, armatures are actually unnecessary, d depending on what you're doing. But um, Yeah, I'm a I'm an armature minimalist. I tend to go underboard when it comes to my armature because just any time I try to be precise with where an armature should be, and I, I always end up sculpting into it. Like you know, I'm putting in a fold or a wrinkle, or 
you know, just push, you know, oh, it, the chin should really be back a bit further, and then I end up hitting my armature. Um, so, and also, when it comes to Sculpey, like polymer clay stuff, if it breaks, it's actually easier to fix if there's no armature in there because it's a nice, clean um, snap with a really flat face, and so it's easy to just super glue and put that back together. Whereas if there's armature wire in there, um, it's it's much more painful. Sometimes you have to dig the armature, the, the wire out to reattach. Dottie says, I would have guessed your hardest project was your Heather sculpture. That's a really good point. Um, doing, doing portraits in general is super hard. You know what? Probably the one that gave me the most frustration ever. This is my most frustrating one ever because I was trying to do a portrait and all I had for reference is a bunch of photos from different angles, different lighting situations, um, who knows what lens they were using, right? So every image and angle I had kind of contradicted the other ones. So I was just constantly going back and forth and back. Like I redid this face 200 times, you know, not, not like wipe it all out and start all over again but it's like oh I got to redo the nose oh now that the nose is there I got to redo the mouth oh now that the mouth is there the cheeks need to be pushed forward or back oh now that the eyes are too far apart you know what I mean and so I just ended up do doing endless loops over and over and over so uh, portraits are incredibly difficult um, I keep taking stabs at them just because you know I want to improve as an artist but yeah they are not fun <laughs> The, the Heather one, I at least have her live in person that I can look at for, for reference when I need it. So it's not as frustrating as trying to do someone who is not ever in the room with you. I keep telling Jennifer Connolly she should, you know, go back to when she was 17 or whatever and um, dress up in her, in her uh, labyrinth. Uh, party dress and hang out at my place, but for some reason she never returns my invitation. So I don't don't know what her deal is. Come hang out at my studio, Jennifer Aniston. Not Jennifer Aniston. Jennifer Connolly. I don't care about Jennifer Aniston. Okay, so I'm seeing more and more bubbles, and and this, like I was said earlier, this is kind of my first practice piece so I'm practicing on it more than I'm trying to make a final beautiful thing with it if I wanted to make a final beautiful thing with it I'd be doing the same sanding process all over the whole surface and that would just uh, it would be a huge pain so I think it's to the point where I can where I can do the you know I'll do some practice painting on him but I'm gonna move on to a different guy and see what it's like with different colors. So this one has its own unique problems. I tried slushing the um, resin around in the mold and as you can see it got all the uh, surface but bubbles still ended up inside of it so now it's all kind of blobby and weird. I'm thinking it's probably not worth doing any extra work on. I'll just use it as a, as a painting, another paint test subject. So I'll just do the bare minimum, scrape the, uh, the seam lines off. Yeah, it's fine for that one. Let's go look at this guy. I don't know what's going on with this weird sticky looking stripe with like sticky stuff on it if maybe the resin wasn't mixed 
perfectly. I'm not sure. I'll see what when I sand it away if it's still there, then I'll know it's it's in the resin. Uh, Nasir says, yeah, that's what I said. It took him years and still not finished. True, but I have a lot of those. Morph says, do you only do lives on Friday? Have YouTube vids on stuff you would use armatures on? I get what you mean as I'm having a hard time with them. Last question. Um, I usually do... Live, well, I always do live streams on a Wednesday nights, West Coast U.S. time, which is often middle of the night in Scotland, I'm sure. Um, and then uh, on weekends, I usually end up on Sundays, but today it's a Saturday. It's a Saturday afternoon here on the Pacific Coast. So it's a little unusual for today. But tomorrow is my wife's birthday, so I don't want to be streaming tomorrow. But I still wanted to hang out with you guys sometime this weekend, so it had to be a Saturday for me. Ouch. Uh, Ivan's asking, you got any tips for clay stop motion animation? Um, be really patient. I I've only done I've only dabbled with it when I was a like a teenager, so I don't really have any. <laughs> my my biggest piece of advice is don't use a camcorder from 1988 because they don't have frame by frame imaging. You have to like hit start and then stop immediately, and it will like record a couple frames. Makes it even jerkier turns out. Uh, this scene here is just the worst. He says, did you ever get any feedback from your Demon Hunter project that you gave to them? Oh, yeah, I did. Uh, they liked it. Which is good. I probably would have been really disappointed if they got back to me and said, this really sucks. We gave it to Goodwill. This guy's head thingy is massive. Which sucks because everything else about him is pretty darn good. I might experiment with filling it with a uh, with try try to color match it to some extent. what that is this this weird stripe is um, some of the pearlescent powder that I put in wasn't didn't mix in perfectly so it kind of made a like like a vein of precious metal and rock or whatever you know it just gets mixed in there weird you gotta dig down and scrape it out Huh, I thought I was really careful to mix it really well, but obviously not enough. Whew. 
All right, so I'm not gonna bother doing any more scraping on this one since I'm gonna do some filling. So I'm gonna put things that I need to fill over there. Let's check this guy out. So this one was another one where it's close to being awesome, but it had some weird artifacts going on there. Now this happened, I determined, because I had powdered the mold with baby powder, which is which works great for um, for opaque resin, but as it as it pulled the baby powder off and the two parts came together, it created that seam. So I think I'm going to end up just painting over this one completely. The there's hardly any seams though, it turned out really well. And also you can see I didn't quite mix the pigment in perfectly. There's a couple little little drops of it there. Alright, Don, I'll tell Heather happy birthday. From you guys. I think this might be my favorite uh, finish for this guy. It's almost opaque, but there's just enough subsurface lighting in it where you can, where it's got just a little bit of ethereal look to it. I, I played with how much I put in. Like here, I put in obviously less, and so it's a little more transparent. It's still definitely not. Like you can see how how you can see my finger through the wing there it's just just a little bit this one obviously you can't can't see through it at all um, not sure which one I like better but compared to the original one I had where it's just kind of a pearlescent but completely opaque because you know it's clay under there uh, you, you can definitely see the difference in the way the light reflects off of it and it, is uh, partially absorbed. Uh, Morph says, thanks for the putty advice. I'll try to hope to catch you again. Like the stuff you do, gotta go look at website, and then work time. Yeah, nights. LOL, cheers. Hey, thanks for stopping by. So the, the bubbles I got in this one are pretty little and definitely not something I'm concerned with. And this here says, Josh, don't you think age is a weird thing? Like when you see younger people, you think there was a point in time where I existed and you're not. Same thing applies to you when seen by older people. That is weird. Try having kids who are full-grown adults. That gets even weirder. The only upsetting thing about this guy is these little pock marks on the tip of his wing. Other than that, he's like perfect. I, I think I may try to cast this guy again with this amount of uh, silver. Or it's not silver. It's it's like white pearlescent powder. The other really weird thing about age is because society is changing so fast compared to any other time in history, it's like your context for 
understanding reality is just so different from generation to generation. And so there's like this huge gap you have to work to overcome to to really connect with someone who's, you know, even even a decade or so older or younger than you. I imagine that wasn't such a problem when, you know, everyone had the same technology and lived in the same village and, you know what I mean? It was just, life was always the same for everyone, but these days, like, it's, it's so weird for me to think because I, I grew up, you know, before the internet, before cell phones, uh, you know, so things are so different, and then for kids born nowadays, they're going to be growing up with self-driving cars, and, like, the idea that we had to drive ourselves around is going to be so weird to them. not sure if the areas that I sand, if I'll ever be able to get them back up to the full amount of pearlescence that the rest of the body has. The base that I'm going to be painting anyway, I'm not worried about obviously, but I think I'll try to like fade the sanded part up into the unsanded part. Deep talk from Uncle Josh. That's right. I should have my own YouTube channel called that. Slam pasta says I'm 26 and an art class with 18 and 19 year olds and have to explain things like not having a mobile phone or old butt internet. That makes you feel old. A <laughs> uh, little while ago, I had someone uh, someone started at my company at ArenaNet, and they said that. Um, you know, a game that I worked on was, at, you know, a big inspiration to them as a kid. <laughs> and I was just like, hmm, well, it's inevitable. It's going to happen. Fortunately, I, uh, I enjoy getting older. I really like the perspective that it gives me, and uh, I feel like I have more wisdom, and I'm more at peace with the world. A lot of that has to do with marrying someone who's perfect for you, perfect for me, not you. You can't have her. Uh, that has a lot to do with the peace, but I mean, just in general... Um, I guess I don't, I don't, like some of the things that I felt when I was younger was I had to prove myself. Um, I had to be better than people around me or, you know, so I had a sense of self, self-worth that was tied very closely to comparisons with other people and not having that anymore, just being content with who I am. I'm like, you know what? Uh, I know what I like doing now. It's fine that I'm not the very best in the world at it. I can just be I can just be where I'm at and be honest with myself and with others about that. 
and just just enjoy the process of learning and growing without having to uh, constantly be looking around me and thinking, oh, wh what do they think of me? Hi, Aletha. I haven't says in Bulgaria, we have an actress that's 100 years old and her daughter is 65 years old. And I remember that she once said in an interview, my little baby, a little baby. She's nearly 70. It was funny. She's still on stage, by the way. That's awesome. Okay, let's see what happens when I use this ultra fine sanding sponge. like it's still not getting back to the same amount of um, pearlescent glossiness. Alita says, I'd like getting older and wiser better if it didn't creak as much. Well, yeah, that is a downside. Hi, Paradusk. Daddy says, I think it's weird how a certain date means nothing to you until something significant happens. For example, June 15th meant nothing to me growing up, but then I had my daughter on that day. Yeah, I imagine your, your calendar starts filling up more and more with uh, meaningful things as you get older. And Sears says, talking about marriage, I'm still afraid to take that step. My parents keep telling me they want to see my kids and I'm like I don't even want to see my own kids <laughs> yeah that's that's tough man I uh, you know, I jumped into marriage super fast straight out of high school and um, except for all the wonderful life lessons I learned from it uh, it was quite hellish and I'm very glad that that stage of my life is over. So I know what marrying the wrong person, uh, how much that costs. <laughs> and uh, so, man, just just imagining being young again and having to worry about that just stresses me out. I'm uh, really glad I'm not in that point. Assuming you're a young person who wants to get married. If you don't, more power to you. I think is oh still a seam there. Ivan, I am 42 years old. Happily middle-aged. All right, you guys, tell me, uh, out of all these guys, if I were to give one away as a prize on my channel when I when I release this uh, this tutorial on um, mold making, which one of these would you would you want as a prize?
Alitha says, no kids for me. I'll stick with cats. Good choice. Another thing. Do I do anything on this guy? Oh, that's the one with the silver mane. Yeah. Slam likes number four, this one. Uh, Ivan likes five. Yeah, Seer has an inner conflict. Don't like to picture myself married in the future, but at the same time, I think it's not normal not getting married and have kids. Uh, I guess it depends on your culture. Certainly in the US, it's becoming more, I, I think in uh, most of Western Europe as well, it's becoming more and more normal to not get married or have kids most people still end up living together but a lot more just doing the math and thinking they're going to be a lot happier without kids you know what they're they're probably right you can't argue with that kids are kids are hard and heartbreaking and uh incredible stressors on a, on a relationship. On the other hand, it's not like I would take my kids back, you know, and if, if there was some magic thing I could do to, to take them, you know, have them never have existed, and I get all that time and energy and money back, um, I, I would not do that. So... But again, that's because they're actual people and not potential people. That's a, that's a whole philosophical conundrum there. How, how you treat potential people versus actual people. Like, what, uh, what ethical obligations do we have to future generations that don't exist yet, you know? To the potential people out there, as opposed to the people who exist now. If you say we should only care about the people who exist now, then, you know, you can pretty much destroy the planet and it wouldn't matter because, hey, it, uh, it's better for us this way right now, right here. But if you say we have the same ethical obligations to future people or potential people that we have to current people, you end up in all sorts of other silly uh, positions as well. So, Paradusk says three kind of has a mix of four and five. So I'd go with that. This one is three. Uh, yeah, it does. I'm going to be trying different paint techniques on all of them and I'm sure they'll end up different yet again and then hopefully I can mix and match to find the best one and then I'll probably do another two or three of them in that style just so I can have one for myself and give one away on the channel and uh, who knows what else with the other one. Alright, so these Octorox I mix some glitter into them and I don't I don't actually like the glitter here's the non glitter versions um, and of course they'll look very different once they get a paint job and they've got the white around their eyes and uh, all that kind of stuff but um, so these ones are essentially going to be my my practice ones and then hopefully I'll know exactly what I'm doing once I start painting these guys. 
Here's another example of what pressure casting can do. You can see all these little all these little bumper doodles that I've got to chip off. Doink. There's a particularly big one right there. There's a lot of them around the, the leg joints. I may see what it's like just to leave them there. After all, who's to say that Octorox don't get pimples in their armpits? Uh, Ivan's asking, have I heard of, heard of the game Asura's Wrath? I think I have, but I cannot call to mind what it is right now. We have creatures called Asura in the game I work on, Guild Wars 2, but um, I realize that it is, they're named after something else, I can't remember what it is, some kind of little demiurge or some, some kind of creature in some mythology that I don't recall. No pimples on the rock. That does not make sense. Sounds painful. Pimples in the armpit, you mean? Yeah. Awesome game. I should check it out. Indian mythology, I'm sure, says Slam Pasta. That sounds right. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll look into it again. I, uh, what what kind of a game is it? Is it role playing, action, adventure, football? Finding more pimples all over. They remind me of uh, the little pimples that infants get. Action game. Mix between Indian mitt. Hmm. Let's 
So if pimples in your armpits um, are painful and irritating, that would explain why Octorox are always trying to attack anyone who gets near them. They're just always enraged. I recently heard that um, the vast majority of lion attacks, when lions are attacking humans, uh, once they end up hunting them down, like, like that one in that famous story of the ghost in the darkness, um, it's because they have uh, tooth infections and they're just like driven wild with pain. This guy looks pretty delicious, doesn't he? Right, I'll do a much faster pass on this guy since he's pretty much just going to be a paint practice dummy. His eyes look really cool though when you see little bits of sparkle in there. That's pretty rad. And who knows, like after I do the rest of the paint job, maybe maybe the glitter will, um, I'll be surprised and I'll be like, oh, that looks great. So much of art and design is just improvisation when you're mixing elements together and you end up surprising yourself. I think it tends to happen less as you get older because you start doing the same stuff over and over again. Uh, which is something that I try to actively combat. It's why almost every art project I do I'm still I'm still doing stuff I'm not quite sure how to do right. <laughs> Which can be frustrating, but it also um, keeps me on my toes and keeps me surprised. I, I sometimes envy those artists. Like, there's a lot of uh, one of a kind uh, art, doll artists that will just do a fairy or a pinup girl or whatever. Like, and they just crank them out like one one a week. They just make a one of a kind, and they've got it down so pat that they can do it super consistently and yeah, I respect that that's awesome that you can dig down that deep and just like find your bliss find something that you love so much that you just want to keep doing the same thing over and over and over I mean not exactly the same they always have you know slightly different themes but um yeah, I have, I have another friend who does Santas. Like, he just made a career out of doing Santas. He he owned a, a store in uh, downtown Kirkland here. Um, I can't remember what it was called, but yeah, he just made polymer, one-of-a-kind polymer Santas all day, every day. I have not got to the point where I'm ready to settle down and do that. Did I already do this guy? Apparently not. The picture went black. Is it still black? I'm seeing it all right on uh, my end. Paradox says you should make a gummy version with Jolly Ranchers as the rocks. Mm, that sounds delicious. Thought he says my husband is waiting for me so we can binge watch Rain on Netflix. So I'll catch y'all later. Bye, Dottie. Yeah, Heather's been watching Rain. Looks pretty good. 
she needs to have a collection of shows that she can watch without me when I'm working in the garage so that is one of those that it's like eh, it looks cool I'm sure I would enjoy watching it but I don't mind her to watch that without me We've been watching a different BBC show, BBC show together called Episode, which is, no one has ever heard of it, but it's got like five seasons. Uh, it's, it's a pretty unique show, because it's, it's about people making a show. Like, they, they made a show in England, it's well regarded, it's award winning, brilliant show, and then some Hollywood uh, Hot Shot says, hey, I want you to come do this for our channel. So they go down to L.A. and then it's just about their show, just all the terrible things that happen with uh, the Hollywood business system, the business and the culture. <laughs> they just get corrupted and it's awful. I guess I like it because it reinforces my biases that everything about Hollywood is terrible. This one, I, I guess the uh, the mold was sitting a little crooked, so you can see this this tentacle here uh, didn't fill in like the other. So I'm going to have to do a little reconstructive surgery on him or her. Who can tell with Octorox anyway? I've never been able to tell. And whose business is it anyway to determine the sex or gender of any given Octorok? It's not my job to police them. Donnie, you got it back. Excellent. Now, Sierra says, speaking of about shows, Josh, you definitely should watch this new Netflix series called Altered Carbon. Absolutely. I've been looking forward to that one. Is it at, it's out now? Last I heard about it, it wasn't out yet. But that was like a couple weeks ago. I think it's time to break out a little, a little bit of epoxy sculpt. Oh wait, do I? This one I it cast it just way too clear, um, so I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with this one. Some sort of paint-related test. I already tried doing the thing where I'm, I paint the inside there to get the look of rocks inside. It's all right, but uh, it's not a very valuable test because the final uh, Octorok is so much uh, darker that, yeah. So I'm not sure if I need to paint the inside darker or lighter 
to get the look of, of rocks pushing up under the skin there, which was the entire reason that I cast it in the first place. You know, I ruined my original sculpt specifically so that I can cast it specifically so it would look like there's rocks under the skin there. So uh, it's going to be really important to, to get that right. Oh, here's another one. Um, so that one I did with just, uh, you know, 50% gray, just a spray primer. I don't know if it's getting the look that I want or not. It, I'm probably not going to know until I paint the rest of the piece. Uh, okay. Let's mix some clay. Ivan says, you can have any superpower you want that is your choice. People in the chat, please answer too. Ooh, my superpower is... I just want to live long enough to where transhumanism becomes possible and I can upload myself to virtual reality and spend eternity making incredible uh, environments and experiences for people. That's all I want. Simple, simple request. Uh, let's see. This. So I th think I just need white for what I'm doing because the underside of their tentacles are white. So getting as close as you can with the clay is a good idea. The yellow Nintendo is asking, Octorox, the ones from Zelda? Yes, these are the ones from the very original Legend of Zelda. Because that's the one I started on. Slam Pasta says, the second one you had up was pretty perfect if you ask me. The rocks making the skin whiter under tension. Yeah, I'm going to have to experiment to see what what color works best with the dark. Is this... Yeah, this, so gray, yeah, makes it look kind of whitish. Yeah, Sierra says, I would like to be able to teleport because I'm spending 75% of my life in the traffic. <laughs> That's also a good one. I mean, hopefully eventually we can all telecommute to work with VR, and if we do physical manual labor jobs, it's either done by robots or uh, controlled by us from home. Ivan says, mine would be rage burst. That means the anger I get, the powerful I get, the more powerful I get. Uh, boy, I would want the opposite of that because I don't like it when I get angry and lose control. I feel much um, unhappier with myself when that happens. Um, okay, this guy. Paradusk says, lighter paint would probably show the rocks well and time stop or time skip with foresight to see what I'm skipping. Time stop. So you would stop time, and then, and then you'd be able to see what would happen, and then go back to before you started skipping. Is that what you mean? Uh, Yellow Nintendo says, are you gonna sell these, or just something of your personal collection, like the Trico and your ongoing Colossus? Uh, so these are all. I'm planning to photograph them and use them as sprites to recreate the original game, which of course Nintendo will never let me sell or distribute. Um, but I'm sure I could take video of it and put the video up. I don't know. I just want my own version of Zelda that um, has like super high res graphics with the way I saw the, uh, the world and the creatures as a kid when I played it.
Aiden says, I would like to be able to hold focus on any given thing for superhuman amounts of time, e.g. more than 45 seconds. So you want your your uh, superpower to be um, to be ADD medication? Is that <laughs> Paradesk says, no, skipping is different, like video game lag, but I know what's going to happen. So you're seeing into the future, essentially? Or are you also traveling into the future, just passing the boring parts of life? Nasir says, speaking about anger, can someone explain why I get so calm and quiet when I get angry? It seems like the opposite of what's supposed to be happening. <laughs> well, in my case, when I get angry, I start out getting quiet and withdrawn. And it turns out what's happening is internally, it's just building and building in the worst possible way until, like, I just lose control. Um which is the absolute worst element of who I am and I hate that. Fortunately, I've gone for years without any such thing happening because I have an amazing job, I have an amazing boss, I have amazing co-workers, I have an amazing wife, uh, the remaining son that lives with me is amazing, so uh, I just haven't been put in a situation where that has manifest. Um, and I'm just incredibly lucky and blessed that that's the case. But I think generally shutting down is, is like a defense mechanism. Like your brain is saying, all right, we know that we can't handle this. And we know that uh, something bad is going to happen if we act on this. By the way, consciousness is not an I, it's a we, in case you are not current with modern... Uh, brain science. Your brain is composed of thousands of competing interests and voices and what bubbles to the surface is what we then interpret as the royal I, you know, when, when I make a decision. It's really just those competing interests duking it out in the subconscious and one of them comes to the surface as the most powerful and then we're like, Oh, I've decided this, or I'm thinking that. But that's that's uh, neither here nor there, except to the extent that I'm saying we when I'm talking about uh, conscious your your brain, right? So your brain is sh is shutting down and saying uh, bad things happen if if I act the way I feel, and so it's a, like a safety uh, safety valve that goes off, or a breaker switch on a circuit that's getting over overpowered. That's my understanding of it from uh, Dr. Josh, PhD in psychiatry. No, not. I've, uh, I've listened to several lectures and I currently listen to several blog or podcasts on psychology just because I find psychology fascinating. But as with all fields, it turns out that there's endless disagreement about every element of it. So, there's no one answer to that. Slam says, that came out. It's called Breath of the Wild. Uh, yeah, that Breath of the Wild, uh, one of the reasons I absolutely adored it was because it was very much how I felt when I was playing the original Legend of Zelda. That is true. Um, 
Mine's going to be more a, a line for line recreation, though. Like, it's going to be this, the oh, exactly the same. Like, the only thing that's going to be different is the way it looks. But the world will be exactly the same. The place, play area will be exactly the same. The enemies will be exactly the same. Um, you know, I'm going to go through all the effort of recreating it in some game engine. So I'm absolutely going to end up doing a remix version of it where it's like, I'm going to add some modern design sensibilities to this and see if it's still fun. You know, if the enemies have actual AI instead of just like wandering back and forth, shooting if they see you sort of scripts. Um, yeah, rebalancing things, that sort of stuff. Which I figure I'm allowed to do because I've been making, designing video games for over 20 years now, so... It's not heresy for me to think that I can improve the original Legend of Zelda. I'm sure Miyamoto would agree. Nasser says, not being able to focus on things is an illness? Because, boy, I think I'm sick and not aware of it. <laughs> uh, you know, there's a spectrum of the ability to focus on things. And some people fall far enough on that spectrum where it's considered a disability, yeah. Um, and for some people, medication helps. For other people, it's um, they should not be on medication for it. Um, and it's really hard to tell the difference between the two. Uh, both of my kids have been on medication for it. Um, Heather should be on medication for it, but she's on so many other meds that it's just not worth it. Um, I have... I totally could self-diagnose myself with attention deficit disorder. Um, I don't know if I could get a doctor to agree with me, but man, when if, if I'm not working on something that is... I'm really passionate about, yeah, I almost instantly get tired, cranky, lazy, distracted. I'm so super lucky that I work <laughs> at a video game company that makes stuff that's fun to make. Otherwise, I would probably have been fired a thousand times working at jobs that I hate. I did it a bit. I worked at a couple fast food restaurants when I was going to uh, to college. And I was absolutely miserable. Absolutely horrible. Except during, um, I didn't mind it during rush hour, like during lunch hours and stuff like that, where it was just constant stimulation, like, do this. Now you got to do this. Now you got to talk to that person. Now you got to go over there. Now you got to start this thing because it was it was almost like a game. And I, you know, I could get better at the game. Paradisk says King 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 Crimson never fails to confuse. Um, isn't King Crimson a band? What are you talking about? What you say? Uh, Ivan says, yep, that's right, Josh. That's exactly what's happening. I usually hulk out all the time, but that's because I have anger issues. Yeah. Everyone's got some kind of issues. All I needed to do on this guy. Does this guy need any help? Mm. That's a weird little bubble in there. I could probably. Mm, I don't want to stick this white in there because that's just going to exacerbate the problem. 
I guess I could put a drop of black paint in there and then put this in. Let's see what happens if I do that. Nasir says, you tell me if I'm normal or sick. When I'm watching TV and it's time to eat, I pause the show to go eat because I feel I'm missing a lot while eating. Um, yeah, I, I hate missing parts of shows. I would not... Oh, are you saying like you can't eat and watch the show at the same time? If that's what you're saying, then that is not an issue I have. I love eating while I while I watch shows. Um, which is actually really dumb because uh, it turns out if you're like me and you have like emotional eating issues, um, you're really wasting calories because you're not truly appreciating the food because you're, you know, paying attention to a show for crying out loud. Um, you should be focusing on your enjoyment of the food so that you're not always thinking, oh, now I want more food. There we go, that's better. Yellow Nintendo says, that's exactly me in art. If we are told to draw something and I don't like it, straight away I lose interest and put in almost no effort. Yeah. I uh, wish that I was more mature and able to you know do the right thing regardless of my feelings about it but turns out that's hard Slam Pasta says, it just works. And then a big nose. I don't know what you're referring to. Aletha says, I have so many issues, they are volumes. Paradusk. Uh, in part five of JoJo, there's a power called Kim Crimson. Its ability reflects off of a couple of King Crimson songs, too. Part 5 of JoJo. I have no idea what you're talking about. What's JoJo? Dane. Hi, Dane. Says, uh, Josh, will you put lights in the sculptures? Uh, I wasn't planning on putting them in these particular ones. Might look cool, but it's not really what the, uh, what the characters are like in the game. And I'm trying to recreate the game, so... Anything. 
Nah, need anything. Seems fine. Nah, that guy's a throwaway. Oh, this guy needs a little, little help on this final sucker. Nasir says, what happens is I start paying attention on the food and ignoring the show. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I have the opposite effect where I, I find that I've eaten all my food and can't even remember eating it because I was so focused on the show. It's like, well, because eating food is a big emotional anchor for me, like it's one of those things that I just look forward to the whole day is the next time I get to eat. Uh, it's really foolish for me to waste what should be that emotional anchor on, uh, you know, I'm dispersing the power of it, diminishing the power of it that way. The stream is starting to become a therapy session. <laughs> Well, you know, if it is a therapy session, just remember you get what you pay for. I will give you exactly the quality of therapy uh, that your zero dollars and zero cents have earned. and giggles. Let's see what happens when I pack white into these bubbles. Slam Pasta says, it's like the fist of the North Star fell into a fashion shoot. Uh, Paradesk says, it's a dumb comic book about punching people. Yeah, that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so you can definitely see a little bit of perturbance from the white and the transparent. But like I said, on this guy, I'm going to experiment with um, painting the bottom of him and then fading that paint up into no paint on the top. Ivan says, hey Josh, I was just curious, do you know anyone who stutters? Uh, yeah. Got some co-workers who stutter. Uh, my son had other kinds of speech impediment that he's uh, grown out of. Why do you stutter? Did I stutter? this guy's belly button too. says, why not filling it with transparent silicone? Um, it's not a bad 
idea, well, I don't, there's no sculpting material that you can sculpt and like put in place and smooth it and stuff. There's like liquid I could drop in there. Uh, which I guess that's not a terrible idea. I could have tried that. Let's see if there's another one that needs it. You can try it on this one. Yeah, you try it real quick for funsies. Yellow says, I finished the basic illustration and story of volume one of my manga and I tried to submit it to some manga publishers, and, but there's a waiting list. Yeah, I'm sure there are. Uh, good luck with that. Oh wait, what is... Mm, not that... But... I'm just gonna try this. Which is just a... I use this for drops water droplets and water effects on a lot of stuff, but might as well see if it will fill a gap nicely. Well, not if I miss. You study pretty stutter pretty bad, Ivan. Well, you know who else stutters pretty bad? Uh, one of the richest, most popular people in the world, Elon Musk. So I wouldn't let it get you down. Dang, yes, I'm going to paint the models. Um, not today, I've got to wait for all the various things I've done to dry and set and stuff. Probably on the next stream. Quasar says, hey Josh, fan of your Guild Wars 2 work, enjoying these chill streams, even though I'm not into craft myself, which is probably asked often, but why aren't you on Twitch? Uh, I am not on Twitch because I already have a platform on YouTube and the thought of having to learn all the stuff I need to learn to do well on Twitch and like build a platform over there just seems daunting to me. Although they do have a much better tipping system than YouTube. I, I just hope YouTube figures out how to do it better. So right now, I want to say they take 30% of any tips that anyone gives me. And it's not like really advertised or understood well how it works. So not happy about that. Uh, so the... This stuff has like a little bit of a yellowish hue to it and definitely seeing that a bit through the... But hey, this was all an experiment to see how that worked out. Dane says maybe you could use clear dental acrylic with tint and put it in a pressure pot. Actually, I have that UV uh, dental acrylic stuff that you just shine a UV light on to harden. I'm not sure where that went. I think I have it over here. One sec. Oh. 
Well, it's cool that I have this, but it needs the little... There's supposed to be a little uh, UV light McDeely in there. It's going to be pretty useless if I can't actually uh, set it. Weird and frustrating. Why would it not be in the box? My guess would be because I I think this might be a refill and I was probably using it on something and put it down and didn't put it back in the thing. But uh, yeah, I'm going to try that next time I find it because I totally forgot I had that thing right now sir you can tip in twitch you can also tip on on this there's some button somewhere that lets you do that um but like I said, it's it, they take 30% of a tip. So I don't even want people to tip because that's excessive, if you ask me. Quasar says, yeah, I figured as much, but I think Twitch is way easier to grow and reach audience. Probably more profitable, too. But I get that it's not the point. Um... Yeah, I mean, it's something I, I want to think about. I, Especially if there's a way that I can broadcast to both at the same time. But as far as I know, that's not something you can really do well. Um, yeah. Uh, I think I'm at a good quitting point for today. And uh, hopefully on, on Wednesday... I'll be at a point where I can start painting these guys and making them look good. That would be cool. Yeah. Alright, so I'm going to call it for today. Thanks for stopping by on a Saturday, you guys. And uh, hopefully I'll see you guys Wednesday at 8 o'clock Pacific time. Go to my website if you've never been there. Breathoflifeart.com and check out my stuff. That'd be cool. Uh, subscribe to my newsletter. That'd be super cool. Okay. Bye, guys.